first things first, thank you all for 600 subscribers. Yay. In this video, I will go over how to texture a chunk using procedural UV mapping. Before we get started, there will be two links in the description, one pointing to a text doc that has a series of read-only int arrays that store the order in which certain UV coordinates will be added depending on the face's direction. The second link has a PNG file that represents the texture atlas that will be used for the duration of this series. So go ahead and download those, and when you are ready, we can get into the texturing of chunks in Minecraft. So immediately create a new C-sharp script called Texture Loader. Now in Visual Studio in the Texture Loader class, create another class inside called Cube Texture. Also put on the system.serializable attribute so you can modify how blocks will look. Now in the Cube Texture class, create a string variable called Texture Name and three public sprite variables that each represent the sprite that will be displayed on each axis in the third dimension. The Texture Name's main purpose is so we can have an easier time creating and modifying blocks in the editor. After that, create another class called Face Textures, give this class the system.serializable attribute, and in this class, create public sprite variables for each side of a cube. Also, create a public variable for this class in the Cube Texture class. Now add in a function that returns a vector2 array called getUVAtDirection, which takes in a vector3 int argument representing a direction. This function checks a direction in each separate 3D axis and returns the sprite UVs accordingly. If the specific axis texture variable is null, it will resort to the specific face texture UVs. And the null return at the end is to take into account that each component in the vector 3 int can be any real number besides 1. Now in the main class, create a serialized private cube texture array variable and a public dictionary that uses ints as keys and a cube texture as a value. After this, replace the start and update method with the awake method and in this function, initialize the textures dictionary with the cube textures array using a for loop. Now in the world generator class, create a serialized private variable that uses the texture loader class as its type. And moving straight into the chunk mesh creator class, have its constructor take in a texture loader as an argument and assign the argument to a variable within the chunk mesh creator class. After that, go into the face data class and have the constructor in this class take in an int array representing the UV order. Next up, copy paste the UV order text file contents into the script. And in the constructor for the chunk mesh creator, add in the UV order arguments to the lines where face data instances are created. Make sure the face direction matches the UV order representing its axis. Now, in the create mesh from data function, add in a variable representing a list of vector 2s called UVs. In the part where actual geometry is added to the mesh, get a reference to the block's cube texture using the dictionary in the texture loader. The block ID being looped over will be the key. After that, use the get UVs at direction function to get the UVs needed to add onto the mesh. For the index, use the UV index order array within the face data type. 
Also, put these lines in the catch statement so if there is an error in the checking process, it will match the UV count with the vertice count. When that is complete, use the mesh set UVs function to apply the UV list generated. With that line complete, go into the Unity Editor, import the texture atlas from the description, import the sprite 2D package, and use the sprite editor to cut out 16 by 16 sprites. After that, set the mesh type on the texture to be full rect, attach the texture loader class onto the game master or game object, and from there, add in cube textures for blocks 1 to 4 since they are being used in the generation. And when you run the game and assign a material with the atlas as the base map to the chunk, you should get a nicely textured chunk like this. And that is my rendition of how chunks are textured in Minecraft. In the next video, I'm going to go over adding in a character controller and implementing infinite terrain generation. There will also be some optimizations that we can do, so if you're interested, like and subscribe. Other than all of that, I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.